Hey everybody, my name is Brian, and in this video we're going to talk about 30 days of Magic 8-Ball. So first off, what is Magic 8-Ball? It is an advanced stock market indicator, I actually call it a stock market prediction engine that I created, and it uses the full options chain. I have a ton of videos out in my YouTube channel, so definitely go out and check those out. But in this video we're focused on just the raw profits that we made taking this for 30 days. Um, Magic 8-Ball is currently focused on zero DTE, and it predicts what's called soon and end of day. I mean, it's going to give you what we think is going to happen within like an hour and what we think is going to happen at the end of the day. And all of the trades that this thing kicks out are designed to run to the end of day. But we're going to trade these a few different ways, and I'll go over the details. Um, so it includes example trades. It has a vibrant online community, and it has free and premium servers. There are links down below. Okay, 30 days of magic, we have some ground rules here. First, we check the news every single day. Around 10 a.m., we start looking for an entry. Now, when I say 10 a.m., that's Eastern Standard Time. All times that we discuss are going to be Eastern Standard Time. And that time is subjective. Notice the first bullet point is check the news. So if there's, say, a Fed speaker that's going to you know, increase the interest rates at 10 a.m., we're not trading at 10 a.m. We'll wait till 10.30 or 11. But 10 a.m. is when we start even considering looking for an entry. We'll copy and paste those trades directly out of Magic 8-Ball into Thinkorswim. I mean, there's zero brain power involved. It's literally copy and paste. Around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we look at Sonar. And Sonar, I've made a few videos on. It takes a little bit of an explanation. It is a subset of Magic 8-Ball that tries to really pinpoint that end of day. Um, I will go over that a little bit in this video, but again, see my other videos. Around 1 p.m., we look at Sonar and we manually create the trade. I'm gonna automate that in the future, but for right now, it's a manual creation. And of course, we do this a couple different ways in this video. We do it what I call a normal way, where we have stop loss, profit collection, but then we do the expiration way, meaning we just fire and forget a trade. We throw it out there and forget about it, and at the end of day, see what happened. And Unfortunately, this is the internet, so I have to repeat myself constantly because I know there's people that are fast forwarding through the slide, so bear with me if I'm repetitious. One question I'm often asked is what's the difference between the free and the premium services? Well, the links are down below, so you can check both of them out. The free service is free. You don't even have to feed it a credit card. It's just free. It's going to give you a chart every 30 minutes. There's no trades, just charts, and it only covers SPX. Again, the link's down below. And the premium service gives you every five minutes a prediction, and that prediction includes the metrics, the charts, and the example trades. It covers underlying such as SPX, SPY, QQQ, Apple, Tesla, and more. It's 30 days completely free of charge, and then after that, you're billed $25 a month. Again, I'm not trying to get rich selling subscriptions. I'm just trying to pay for the server infrastructure that runs all this stuff. Some special notes before we really dive in here. We're talking specifically about SPX for 30 days. That's all this is, is SPX for 30 days. Some of the other underlyings are way more accurate, but you make less money because it's, you know, less money you're throwing into it. Um, these are also paper trades that you're gonna see screenshots of. Now I want to preface this with, paper trade fills are absolute garbage. And for that very reason, I use the actual number in the Thinkorswim Profit Analyzer because that is fairly accurate. We're also using just one contract, but they can of course scale bigger, and I'll talk about that later. So when I say you make $50 a trade, that may seem underwhelming until you realize that you can scale that out you know, to 10 contracts or even 100 or 1,000 contracts. It depends on your bank account size. And of course, with stops and profits, the numbers are guides. There's really no hard, fast rule. Watch the market and trust your instinct. Again, this is not financial advice. Stop loss is critical when you are trading with your account. I just, I cannot state that enough. I don't want somebody going, throwing their life savings into a butterfly and then losing everything. Remember, you are responsible for your own trades and your own money. Trust yourself, trust your judgment, and use stop loss. All right, the 10 a.m. entry time. Again, at the risk of being repetitious, there's a delay if there's news. So this is 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and if there's news like a Fed speaker at 10 a.m. or you know University of Michigan or whatever, I will actually delay. Now, where do I find this news? Uh, multiple sources like Forex Factory, uh, CNN, Fox News, I mean, Yahoo Trading, Yahoo Finance. 
people will also post things down below, but I typically use Forex Factory because it gives me a nice little chart of what's going on for the day. Um, and then I'll check the indicators. You know, what is the market actually doing inside of Thinkorswim? I will check the charts inside Magic 8-Ball and I will wait until I'm comfortable and I have a good feel for what is going on in the market. And I will just kind of verify Magic 8-Ball with other sources like the charts and the indicators in Thinkorswim just to make sure that everything's lining up. You gotta remember Magic 8-Ball is still very new and sometimes it does some weird things. Once I'm comfortable, I will paste the trades directly into Thinkorswim and I will watch these trades. Let's go ahead and see how this is done. Okay, let's go ahead and look at how we would enter the 10 a.m. trades. This is Thinkorswim, and I am in paper trading or simulated trading. You see up here in the upper left. That means we're not playing with real money. So if you're just starting out, definitely do paper trading. It will save you a lot of mistakes and a lot of headaches because you're playing with basically monopoly money. That being said, there's some gotchas you got to watch out for. Um, this is the setup that I typically use, and this is kind of emulating uh, what I've seen Vance Lauren use. Uh, Vance runs by the numbers. So what I have here is I have uh, TAC ADX or TAC ADX, and that's a pretty nice little indicator, kind of shows the relative strength of where things are going. You can see how it's kind of down, and yet the market's going up, and but the market's kind of petering. That means the strength of that movement is really slowed down. But I also use MACD. And I love MACD because it just tells me the general flow. Um, it's up, you know, it's kind of the same thing as ADX where its momentum has gone down, but it's still in an upward trend. And you can see with the price trends. Now these red and green bars along with this hot pink bar, that's pivots. And let me actually open up. It's SVE pivots for the day. And it just gives you the good support and resistance. Um, they're not a thousand percent accurate, but you know, they're pretty close. And you can see we're really at that resistance level, um, looking to break up into resistance two up here. Again, I am not like a professional day trader. I've learned a lot of this. Um, let's go ahead and flip over to our Discord server. And this is typically what I do, is I will look at the news, what is happening today. And there was no major news for the, the United States today. So I'll typically go out to Forex Factory and then I'll just screenshot it and post it in the group. And I'll say, you know, what's going on? Good luck, everyone. And what we'll do is we'll scroll down. This is the paid server, by the way. We'll scroll down into the predictions. We'll look at SPX. And we're going to hunt for today. Jump to the present here. Uh, it is 142 Eastern Standard Time. You can see this is what the market's doing inside of our little Magic 8-Ball. And we're going to scroll up. Scroll all the way up. And we're going backwards in time here. I'm just demonstrating what the 10 a.m. trades would look like. <laughs> this is the benefit of doing this after the fact is you can go backwards in time. Bear with me. We're at 11.14, 11 11.21. 11 There's probably a faster way. I could probably just search for it or something like that using like this little handle right here. So we're at 10.56. Go up, up, up. 10.40. This is the only downside to the predictions being every five minutes is it does kind of clutter this and you got to kind of hunt for it. 10.05, all right, there's 10.05, and there's 10 a.m. So right in this range is really when I would have started looking this morning. I've already got these up on the live stream. Um, in case you're wondering and you're in the paid server, the live stream is actually right here, Magic Live. You can see there's a bunch of people watching. All right, so this is what it would look like this morning as of 10.05 a.m. This is version 1.0.30. It says SPX current price of whatever it was is expected to move up, closing near 4.469. If we just kind of jump back to think or swim here again, we have the benefit of time. You know, we've gone forward in time since that prediction. So surely it's jumped up way overshot our prediction mark, but you can see the trend is dying down. So I am kind of expecting this to drop down a little bit. Um, but this again was at 10 a.m. And it gives us the qualifying metrics. I do cover all of this in other videos. We're just covering how do we take these trades. So the first thing I would do is like I would just grab a trade. So for example, I'd grab this vertical. I'm just going to right click and copy it. It's literally that simple. Copy it. And then we will flip over to Thinkorswim. We'll go to our analyzer tab. And then we'll bring this little arrow down here up. We'll get rid of whatever's in there. Sometimes it pops back down. And we'll go to this little paste icon right here. And we just paste it in. Now, you have a couple choices here. You can right click and you can analyze a trade. And this is exactly, let me kind of scale this out a little bit here. 
this is exactly what the trade would look like if you jumped in at 10 a.m. Wish that was an easier way to do this. So pretty much if you got into this vertical at 10 a.m., you would actually be pretty much full profit already. Uh, but if you were ready to take the trade, you wouldn't just hit confirm and send. You would make sure that everything lines up with what you're seeing. You think this is going to continue an upward trend and so on using indicators. And you don't have to use these indicators. They're just examples. And then to get the real price, you would unclick this little lock. Now, because this trade was from 10 a.m., the moment I unclick this lock, this trade's going to be worth virtually nothing. So see, now it's worth five. Um, not really great. So that is how you would enter the 10 a.m. trades. Uh, let's flip back here. And I want a special note. It doesn't have to be 10 a.m. So, for example, it is 1342. I'm going right to the newest one. And we're just going to grab this vertical here. Again, you can grab butterflies or iron condors. But this one is uh, about $67. going to copy that. Flip back over here. Go to uh, risk profile. Bring this guy up. Paste in. Hit the unlock. You notice how it's jumped up in value. So I'm going to analyze this. See what's going on. Still pointing up. Uh, but you see, because it's later in the day, we don't have a whole lot of wiggle room, meaning this thing starts backsliding, we're going to lose money. But when you're ready, you just hit confirm and send. And that brings up this little dialog. Make sure you read and understand all of this, because if this was real money, you would now be making a commitment. And you just fire away. And unfortunately, these little check boxes drive me nuts. You can always bring it back up, whatever you want. So that's pretty much how you do it. Pretty simple. Let's look at the rules for trading a butterfly. So butterflies, I do not love. They are the lowest probability trade mathematically, but we trade these in multiple styles. And I'm going to talk about this with each different type of strategy, but we do a normal and expired. So normal, we start looking around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We stop it out at about, you know, 15 to 20%. So if it's just going against us, I don't take that to full expiration and I don't want to lose too much money. However, if it's profitable, I'll try to take profit around 15 to 20%. And you'll see as we go through every day that at the very beginning, my butterfly strategy is horrible. And then towards the end, I really start refining it. Which goes to my next bullet point. Trust your instinct. You know if you're making money or not. It's very clear on the screen. And your gut will tell you if, hey, this just doesn't feel right. Maybe I should close it out. Uh, some examples, I would have like an entry of $2,000. So I'm paying $2,000 to enter. And I'll stop at negative 300 or click profit at positive $300. Um, the expired style is totally different. This is the way the machine does it. Zero motions. You take the trade. You just walk away. You just throw it out there. No stop loss. No profit collection. You walk away. And at the end of the day, you come back and say, did I win or lose? So these are the two metrics we're really going to be tracking as we go through these numbers. And I'm going to do that for every single strategy. Normal style and expired style. As a human being, I would encourage you to use the normal style where you have profit collection and stop loss. But I also get a lot of questions, so I have the expired style, you know, the what if. What if I ran this to expiration? Speaking of what if, this entire video was generated because of the what ifs. Everybody kept saying, what if you did this? So the 30-day results of SPX butterflies, we had a range. Um, we started at 621.23, and we ended at 8323. I did skip a day. I just, I got lazy. I'll admit it. Um, and then we had the normal and the expired style. So normal, we had nine stopped out, 22 profited for a success rate of 64%. Not in love with butterfly success rate. Um, total profit, remember these are one contract per. Total profit for the entire month was $4,311. Uh, expiration, this is usually just fire and forget. So uh, many more of these lost. So we lost 11 of them, but we won 19. Um, success rate was only 42%, but the profit was actually higher, 4,634. You may be scratching your head going, well, if you lost, how is that profit higher? You have to remember that, let's say the butterfly is going to stop out. When you stop, you are realizing that loss. And there are days where it would stop out, but then the price action would swing right back into profitability. And that's where expiration made more money because the price action did move back into the profit zone and the computer just simply doesn't care about taking a loss because it doesn't have bills to pay. Um, it, it's worth noting I'm working on a new version of the butterfly because I hate the large entry costs. So the new version has about a $500 entry cost and has similar success rates. I'm still testing it though.
Iron condors. All right, SPX iron condors for 30 days. Um, I learned these in the Axe option group. There's a gentleman out there named Tom. He walked me through this, and this is when I was very new to options trading, and these things are just amazing. These are the workhorse of the system. I call these my old faithful or my never fails. They do actually fail, but it's few and far between, as you're going to see. So normal style, I start looking around 10 a.m. Again, check the news. I stop at a 1x or a 3x. You don't want to take too much of a loss in a condor. These are huge condors. So the more loss you take, the more it's going to eat into your profit. Um, and speaking of profit, we try to shoot for 100% profit. So even in the normal style, I try to run these to expiration. You'll see why. Uh, the premiums in these are so low. You're talking $40 or $50 per trade to run this all day long. Um, which goes into trusting your instinct. An example would be you'll enter and collect $50 premium, but you'll stop at negative 125. Again, you don't want to stop too late because one bad exit could ruin days worth of profit um, or even a week or a month's worth of profit. You got to be kind of careful. The expired style is totally different. Take the trade, fire, forget, run to expiration. You take the full loss or profit. And for these, full loss is massive. You're talking about risking like $900 to make 50 bucks. It, the risk to reward to these is horrible, but because the condors are so big, they have the best success rate in the system. The results for 30 days of SPX iron condors. Again, we had 30 trades ranging from 621 to 83. I did skip a day because I was lazy. Um, the normal style, only two of them stopped out and we profited on 28 of them. So it has a success rate of 93%, but the profit is low. Look at that, $964 for an entire month. Um, again, you can scale these out with multiple contracts. We'll talk about that later. But just know that these condors are huge, very low premium, very large risk. But as you can see, it has a huge success rate. Expiration, almost identical. We lost to 128 success rate of 93%. The difference is the profit. Look at the profit between the two. The normal style where we're taking stops and profits, it's at $964, where the expiration is at $361. Because those two losses on the expiration style, you took a much greater loss. And that's what I mean by losing on a condor can really dig into your profits. Uh, no stop losses on these will crush you over time. And you're getting such low premium that broker fees and taxes on top of the stops will ultimately crush you. Um, I love condors, but you need to trade a lot of them and you need to be very good at them to really start seeing profit. All right, verticals, SPX, um, normal style. We start looking around 10 a.m. again, check the news. Uh, very similar to condor. I don't like taking a huge loss on these, so I'll stop these out at 1x or 3x, and I do shoot for about 100% profit, meaning let your runners run. If the market's going in your favor, just let it go. Watch it, don't walk away, and respect your stops. But if you're going to win, go for the win. Trust your instinct. An example of this would be you get an entry premium of $100 and you stop out at negative 200. So if you lose, it's not a huge loss. You're just losing you know, like two days worth of trading. Uh, the expired style, again, this is how the computer would do it. Take the trade, walk away, run at the full expiration, which means you're going to take a full loss or profit. Uh, a full loss on these is not great, but it's also not near as bad as a condor. You're talking about maybe like a negative $300, $400 loss, but still, you don't want to do that if you want to make money. The results for verticals, SPX 30 days, range between 621 and 8.3, 30 trades. Again, I took a day off just because I wanted to screw around. Uh, normal, four of them stopped, 26 profited for a success rate of 85%. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, profit of $637. Um, expiration takes a little bit of explanation here. So uh, again, huge shout out to the Axe Option Group. Love you guys. Um, the code in the system mimics how the professional traders do it. And I consider people in Axe to be professional traders. I'm just an idiot on a keyboard making software. But uh, for the expiration, we had five lost, 25 won. Now, remember, these things are going to go to full profit or full expiration. That full profit is where you see that huge difference. The normal style, I did do some profit collection around 50% because the market got weird and I didn't want to take a stop loss where expiration just said, you know what? You only live once, let's just do it. Success rate was lower at 80%, but 
due to the number of trades that would have stopped and then jumped back into profitability, the profit margin is almost double. I mean, look at that, $1,216. Um, stop loss is really key. Um, these could have easily gone against me and I could have taken a big loss. Uh, I don't like running things to expiration like that. I tend to personally trade like a blended approach where I'll have my stops and my profit in there. But if it's obvious the market's just going to go in my favor, I just let it run and take the full profit. 1 p.m. sonar trades. Uh, again, we'll delay if there's news. We look at sonar, which is a subset of Magic 8-Ball. It's a very special chart, and I actually wrote code so it can live inside of Thinkorswim. But it's problematic, which is why I wrote the chart, because it's way easier just to look at a chart. And then I would manually construct the trade. And I'll walk you through how I do that. Uh, I do want to automate this part in the future. I'm just not there yet. I've been super busy with life. Um, part of it is I would find the range, and it's on the chart, it's dead simple. But I'll take that range and I'll add and minus 10 points to that range or $10 to that range, and I'll account for direction. So if the market's just ripping up, I'll do my range, but then I'll move it up just a little bit because I know that market's moving in an uptrend and reverse for a downtrend, obviously. And then I'd watch the trade. And uh, honestly, Sonar was a little problematic when I started it, but you'll see as we go through the days that it actually just really started kicking butt. Let's go ahead and see how I construct these trades. The Sonar trade is a little bit different. Um, so we've got all of the charts and indicators and everything. Um, towards the end of the day, they're not really super helpful. I'm just going to level with you here. So what I'll go is I'll go into Add Simulated Trades. I'll expand this out. You see these bright green boxes? That's called Sonar. It's actually a script I wrote. And before you get super excited, no, it does not auto update and it's got a whole host of other problems, but it can live directly inside of Thinkorswim. So like I can just change the metric here. Um, if you're furiously screenshotting, don't worry, I can actually tell you how to get the full code. Um, but you know, you have to manually update it, but it can tell you exactly where that market's going. So we're really looking for an end of day right around 4490, but we have all this draw down here and this is where you got to kind of play around with it a little bit. It gets a little cumbersome here. I know you're saying, well, you said it doesn't auto update and I just saw that green box pop up. I'll explain that in a second. So we're gonna set the threshold for 45,000. I'm gonna hit okay. And what it's gonna do is it flips to not a number and then it recalculates and everything above 45,000 now gets highlighted. And if you watch, you'll see these numbers change and grow and shrink. And that's how we're really highlighting these cells. Um, really sonar, if we look at it, is a modified version of gamma exposure. It's very, very simple. The problem is displaying it inside of Thinkorswim is not simple. And I know I'm going to get a million comments of why don't you make an indicator? ThinkScript is horrible. It is absolutely horrible. And then I'll get a million comments of well, why don't you go to NinjaTrader or go to TradingView or go to X or go to Y or go to Z. The problem is what Sonar does is it reads the entire options chain. And in this case, it reads the individual cells. And you can't do that with most places like TradingView won't let you do it. Think script won't let you do it. I mean, I could go on and on. Even, yes, interactive brokers, somebody's going to mention that, won't let you do it. So this is about the best I could come up with. Unfortunately, this is horrible to work with. I mean, how do you really tell in this block of green stuff where it's going to go? For that very reason, I actually added it directly into the prediction models. So if we just scroll down, I'm going to jump to present here. You'll see, and this is the paid server, of course, we have our prediction with our text wall. And we have the example trades. And you notice that Sonar is not in the example trades. We have Butterfly, Iron Condor, and Vertical. So Sonar trades, I'm building by hand. And I'll use the actual charts. So I'll look at this chart and say, yep, this bright green line is the soon prediction, meaning we think it's going to go up there soon. The dark green line is the end of day prediction. So we're actually below both of these. So I'm expecting the price, this pink line, to pull up, probably about the middle of those two. Um, and then we have the individual metrics here. So we have volume, interest, gamma, uh, delta. There are many, many more. There's like, I've identified 16 within the market, but these are the four major ones that I really watch. Um, they all kind of tug and pull at the price action. Um, and then here's the sonar chart. That takes that green mess that was in Thinkorswim and puts it into a very simple, easy to understand chart. So what I'll do is around one o'clock, of course, I'll check the news. I'll come into this chart and it's very simple. I look for this magenta line. That's where we think, or Sonar thinks, that the price action is going to land around 4487. And these yellow lines, you see we've got a high and a low at 4500 and 4475. 
those are the ranges. So what I'll do is I'll add $10 and minus $10 and I'll make a little range and then I'll make a condo around that. Special note, you notice the high is 4475 and the low is 4500. It's kind of like breaks your brain because you're like, no, wait a minute, 4500 is higher. No, what it's saying is 4475, this spike down here has more metrics behind it, has more pull. And that's where we get this direction. It's going to pull down. So even though the market's been uptrending, we are anticipating a slight pull down to 4487. Um, now let's go into Thinkorswim. And where are we at? So 4487 would be about right here. So you can see that's how it gets a little bit confusing. So we have this giant number, 54,000, but it's going to pull down a little bit because these two numbers, 49,000, 47,000, 47, are slightly different than these numbers. And you have all these metrics pulling and tugging at the price. So it takes into account all those things. I'm babbling, but it does all the math for you. So you don't have to do it because uh, I absolutely not a friend of math. All right, let's flip back here. So looking at the chart, we got 4,500 and 4,475. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just generate that manually. But I also, I want to put it in here. I put it in option fills. Uh, I do both. So at the 10 a.m., you see 10 a.m., ta-da, right there. I said these are the trades I'm going to test or jump into. Uh, some of those I actually to put real money in. And then around 1 o'clock, ta-da, end of day sonar. And then we did this trade right here. So I'm just going to copy this. Now, I don't always do that. Like if I'm busy in a meeting or something, I, I don't do it. Um, I let you figure it out. But let's go into the risk profile. Pop this in. Oh, order. No order in the clipboard. Let's see what I screwed up. This is the thing I hate about Thinkorswim is it's very, very finicky. If you don't get all of it, it will say it's not well-defined or no order entry. So start with sell and go all the way to the end, the LMT. There we go. And I'm going to analyze this. And this is real time. This is what this looks like right now. So what I've done is when I constructed this thing 53 minutes ago, I expected the market was going to pull up a bit. So here, if you see this little red line right there is where the price action actually is. I'm expecting it to pull up a little bit more, but it gives us so much room. And so we would be getting 90 credits to enter this, but we are risking, and I'm looking at this little box down here uh, where it says negative 410. We're risking $410 to make about 50 bucks according to that which I question that because the actual trade was around 90 when I enter it. So sometimes the analyzer betrays us. Uh, again, that's the time difference of 53 minutes. If I unlock this, let's see where it's worth. No, it's actually right around 90. Kind of curious why it's saying that though. Oh, that's why. Let's unlock that. No, that's 92. Again, it's not an exact science and sometimes you got to mess with it here. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to show you how I would actually construct it. So uh, again, I go in here, and we're just going to do this in real time. I'm going to grab this chart. So we've got 4475 and 4500. I'm going to go into Thinkorswim, add similar trades. If you have the sonar script, that is a huge help because you can highlight where you need to go. So we said 4475 to 4500 right here. So we've got kind of a tight range. So I'll add minus 10. So I'll go to 4460, actually 4465. Right click, analyze, sell trade, and I'm going to go to Iron Condor. And it makes this little guy here. Now, if you look at this, it's way too small. What did we say? 4,500. So now we have to kind of bump up these numbers a little bit. So I'm going to go up to 4510. And this is where it gets kind of bothers me. I get these screwed around all the time. There we go. And we basically construct a condor. Um, so if I were to enter this right now, I've got that, you know, let me pull up some splitters here, or I'm sorry, slices, break even. So these are the little guides helpful. So we said it was between 4475, so about here, and 4500 here. So this, these two dotted lines represent the range of sonar that we think this is going to land in. But you can see I added a little extra padding off to the side here on each side. That way, if I'm wrong, because I'm only human, and it starts sliding, it gives me time to either eject out of the trade or I can just hold my breath and see if it would be successful. But that's how you would construct a sonar trade. 
The rules for sonar get a little murky. I'm trying really hard to make it super simple because a lot of this is very subjective. Uh, to me, sonar is just as much science as it is art. Uh, the normal style, I'll start looking around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's later. Depends on my schedule, depends on the news. And I try to stop these out at 1x, meaning because it's so late in the day, I really don't trust the market. And I just want to stop these out if it's not going in my favor. Uh, but these are, you know, I want to hit that 100% profit margin. So if it's going in my favor, I just let it go. Trust your instinct. Uh, an example of this would be entering, collecting $100 premium, stopping out at negative 100. So really, you don't want to lose too much money in these. The expired style, of course, is just fire and forget. Take the trade, run at the expiration, come back and see what happened. Uh, full loss on these is not great, but it's not horrible because I try to do a three, per, three to one risk to reward. So I'm risking, say, $300 to make $100. So as long as the system is accurate, you know, to a certain degree, these are going to continually win and win and win. And then we will account for losing money just because the accuracy in the system gets better and better. The results for Sonar. Now, the range is 622 to 83. Notice I'm only got 29 trades. I did skip a day. Um, the reason why there's only 29 days instead of 30 is because I started doing this video, 30, 30 Days of Magic. And someone in my group said, why don't you include sonar as well? And I said, eh, it's still pretty experimental, but they convinced me. So here it is only 29 days, but here are the results. Uh, the normal style, I stopped out five times, profited 24 times for a success rate of 79%, profit of about $1,283. Again, these are one contract per trade for 29 days. Uh, expiration style, lost six of these, 123 for a success rate of 74%. Profit, 990. You notice there's less profit because you got that three to one risk to reward ratio. So when these lose, they tend to lose very rapidly. Um, again, I, I kind of follow a blended approach where I will do the normal style of trading, but if it looks like the market's going to work for me, I just try to run it to 100%. And as we go through all the trades, you'll see at the very beginning, I'm kind of like haphazardly doing these and then I get better and better and better with experience. Okay, all results. I wanted to put this into one nice sheet just to make it very clear what we're talking about here. And if I messed up any of the numbers, apologies. I'm not trying to mislead anybody. This is just a lot of video editing for me. Um, so one contract per trade for 30 days. And then I've got you know each style on the left under the trade column. And then I have the type, whether it was normal or the expiration style. And then the profit and accuracies for each one. Butterflies, I, I have a love-hate relationship with butterflies. Um, the normal style profited 4,311 for an accuracy of 64%. The expired style was slightly more money at 4,634 at 42%. Iron condors are workhorse of the system. Shout out to Axe Options. Uh, normal style, $964, 93%. Accuracy, that's amazing accuracy. Um, iron condor expiration style, $361 with 93% accuracy. That's just throwing these massive condors out there and forgetting about it. That's still profit. Vertical normals. Again, these verticals kind of emulate uh, a lot of the folks that are in axe options. Uh, vertical normals, $637 for 85% accuracy. Um, and vertical expiration, less accurate at 80%, but almost double the money, uh, $1,200. Well, $1,216. Sonar, this is still fairly experimental, and this is me manually creating them. I consider this both you know, an art and a science, and admittedly, there's some days where I completely screw it up, and there's some days where I'm like, holy crap, I did that. <laughs> so Sonar Normal, $1,283 for accuracy rate of 79%. Uh, sonar Expiration, $990 with an accuracy of 74%. So I'm fairly happy with those numbers. Now remember, this is just one contract. This is going the lowest dollar amount you can get. This is the low end of the spectrum that we're talking about. I always get asked the what if style questions. What if you did this? What if you did that? And I know one of the questions is gonna be, how does this scale? What if you did five contracts? So that's what the next two slides are. Um, this slide is five contracts. The next slide is if you did 10 contracts, exact same accuracy, at least it should be, unless I screwed up. And the numbers are just multiplied times five because they're five contracts. So butterflies, normal would be $21,000. Expired style would be $23,000. And the uh, 
Iron Condor, normal, $4,800. Uh, Iron Condor expiration, uh, $1,800. Vertical normal, $3,000-ish. Uh, vertical expired, $6,000. Sonar, uh, normal, $6,400. And sonar expiration, $4,950. Um, so those, you can see just by increasing the contract size with that accuracy staying the same, you greatly start increasing your profits, but at the same time, you are of course putting more money on the table to make those trades. So do trade responsibly. I know these numbers are going to get some people excited and some people are going to say, well, I call complete BS on this. Okay. I encourage you to go into the free server or even take the 30 day trial and show me what I'm doing wrong. Um, I have a very open mind and I'll admit that I'm human and maybe I'm not making as much profit out of these as I could. Okay, all results, 10 contracts. This is the last slide I'm going to do on the number of contracts. You could take this out indefinitely to like, you know, 100 contracts or 1,000 contracts, whatever your bank account could handle. Um, this is what I call the edge of sanity. This is my small account could probably not even handle this. Um, all results for 10 contracts, uh, butterfly normals, $43,000, butterfly expirations, $46,000, iron condor normals, $9,000, uh, iron condor expiration, $3,600, uh, vertical normal, $6,000, vertical expiration, $12,000, uh, sonar normal, uh, $12,000, and sonar expiration, nine dollars it's worth noting in this, as you look at the numbers, the accuracy stays the same, of course, unless I screwed something up, but look at the profitability be between the verticals and the sonars. And you see that the sonar normal playing it safe is making just as much money as the verticals just throwing your money into the market and praying. So sonar, I'm, I'm not sure what it is about the trade itself that is making that kind of money other than I think you're getting more premium uh, because, you know, I, a sonar, is an, a sonar trade is an iron condor, but it's a much smaller, much tighter iron condor. So you take two verticals and slap them together and you're getting more premium. I think that's part of it right there. I, I definitely welcome your comments down below and I hope you do join at least one of the servers and review it and let me know. Okay, let's go ahead and review every single day. Yes, that's right. I took screenshots of every single trade for every single day for 30 days. This is going to be a lot of video editing. Bear with me if there's any mistakes. All right, before we dive into the individual days, I wanted to cover my methodology so you don't ask a bunch of questions because we're going to go through each day very, very rapidly. I've got a lot of trades to cover. So over here on the left, I have the day, the trade type, the normal profit, the expired profit, whether it stopped out and whether it expired in profit. So what this means is on day one, this is a butterfly, and you can see the actual trade here. And you see the trade down here highlighted with a little checkbox next to it. That's the actual trade. Um, normal profit is if I traded it like a normal human being, meaning I took profit and I had a stop loss. Expired is if I just ran it to expiration. And then of course, whether it stopped out and whether it expired. Now, if you've never seen the analyzer tab in Thinkorswim, this is what it is. It's right here, you click analyze, and then you go to risk profile and you make sure the checkbox is checked for whatever trade you wanna analyze. This blue or teal line represents end of day and where this pink line, you can barely see it because it's right on top of it, represents, I think it's the profit curve or the time and trade, I can never remember. Basically that means if you were to close the trade right now at that moment in time, that's what it would look like versus the blue line, which is end of day. These screenshots are, as you can see up here in the corner, taken at end of day. The good thing about these is I can zoom in, I can zoom out. These are just screenshots of the end of the day. This was taken at 16.04.55 on June 21st. But it gives you a good idea of what we're working with here. I simply, at the end of the day, took a screenshot and then recorded the results. Now, the green line represents the price at the end of the day. I actually drew that line for every one of these slides. So you don't have to ask, well, where did it actually end up? You can actually see, I think this green line right here. So on day one, this butterfly, pretty much pinned and we call it a pin when it's right here in dead center so it expired for full profit of fourteen hundred dollars now because i don't like to play chicken with my bank account even when i'm doing paper trades i did exit the trade for profit earlier on so it only made 929 dollars pretty simple so what we're going to do as we go through these slides we'll look at the day the trade type the profit for each style and look at the actual analyzer tab 
Day one, butterfly. Okay, this was a, almost a perfect pin for the first day. I was pretty exhilarated. Uh, buyer beware, I am not good at butterflies, and the code in the system reflects my not goodness, <laughs> my inability to just make a butterfly work. So you'll see that the normal trades are kind of haphazard for butterflies in the beginning, and then as time goes on, I get better and better at them. This was just a lucky day for me, to be brutally honest. But normal profit was $929. It expired for $1,400. It did not stop out, and it did expire in full profit, as you can see. The iron condor for the day um, was a normal profit of 30, meaning I took profit at 50%. Uh, I don't like doing that on iron condors because between broker fees and taxes, it's going to eat your profits up. Um, it expired full profit. This is pretty common for iron condors. You see that green line is dead center. I mean, look at this dead center of the iron condor i mean it's right there um so that condor was never challenged uh did not stop out and did expire full profit vertical um this one this takes a little bit of explaining you see where it says normal over here negative 150. what that means is this green bar the price went over against our vertical and went into what i call the bad zone which is you see this drop off here this right here is the zero line goes across screen anything above that zero line this blue bar is profit anything below it is not profit you can see the negatives right here negative one negative 200 negative 300 negative 400 so at some point the price action dipped down and this is where that profit curve that magenta line comes into play because you can still be within the boundaries or the safe zone or the break even of the trade but you could actually lose money so what happened is this green bar starts swinging this way very, very quickly. And I said, mm, I'm not liking that. It hit my stop loss. And I took the stop of negative $150. But then over the course of the day, and this is pretty common, it swung back and the trade would have been full profit of $60. This is, you know, kind of the risk trade-off. Uh, and I mean, those of you that are skilled at trading probably know a better way. Leave your comments below. But this is... You know, one of the risks is that you could actually stop out on a trade that would have made money. All right, day two butterfly here. Um, you can see how it's negative $615. Remember this zero right here? That's our zero line. These little red bars are our break even. Anything above is profit. Anything below is not profit. The green line is the price action. So we're down in the negative territory at negative $615. It's negative 615 for normal and expired because I never stopped the trade out. It was actually over here. And then towards the end of the day, it just went, whoop, adios, goodbye, and lost the money. Again, I get better and better at butterflies as this goes on, but this was an example of just my stupidity. Uh, it did stop out, did not expire. Uh, day two, iron condor, uh, normal and expired, full profit, 55 bucks. Um, did not stop out, did expire, but you can see this green line, it was here and it just rapidly started moving against us. Um, it started, see this magenta line here? Let me zoom in. This magenta line is our profit curve. Once it hits that, it's really gonna start challenging this condor and you'll start losing money very rapidly. You wanna make sure that you don't go past that bar because that's your break even. Um, ignore this orange dotted line. That's just a slice inside of the analyzer that you can move around. Um, it just, so you can help see where things are. I just simply forgot to remove it for the image. Sonar, it says day two sonar. This is a little misleading because it's the first day I did a sonar. Uh, remember, on the second day, people were begging me to do these. It was a swing and a miss, negative $46. And when I say miss, I mean, look, barely missed. It's right there. I mean, we are like not even 50 bucks off. Kind of depressing that it happened on the first day, but it is what it is. End of days are always risky. So we have negative 46 for normal and expired, meaning it moved so fast I couldn't stop it out. And our vertical, of course, these are our workhorse of the system. This thing just worked. Um, we normal 70 and expired 70, meaning the price went this way and at around 50%, I said, you know, it looks like it's gonna keep going. So I just let it go and we got full profit out of that. Absolutely love it, textbook vertical. Day three, butterfly, um, normal profit of $525 and expired for 690. What that means is you see this green line, it was going into the center here and then started moving backwards. So I grabbed the profit and then it kind of moved back again and I got it for the 690 expired, but it did not stop out. It did expire in profit. Butterflies are challenging and you can see once it hits this break even line, it gets very scary, very fast. Those numbers go into the negatives very quickly.
Iron Condor was never challenged. Look at it, just dead center. Um, normal, profit 40. I took the profit when I saw the price kind of move, but it snapped back dead center. This is what I love to see for Iron Condors. Um, again, if you just want very low risk trades, I'd go with the Condors. I have to back up. When I say low risk, I mean higher percentage chance of expiring the money. You're actually risking a lot of money to make low profit. All right. Sonar for day three. Again, a swing and a miss. Um, maybe I had stage fright. When I do these trades, I do them in front of a live audience. So there's like 200 people watching me do these things. And it gets a little nerve wracking at times. Uh, normal profit was negative 170, meaning this thing shot out down here. And I was like, oh no. So I took the stop, but it did snap back and expired for negative $20. In our vertical, uh, another textbook vertical. I mean, it just went in the direction we wanted it to go, even though it started slamming back against us. I mean, let me zoom in here. It never really even challenged it. It just stayed right above that profit curve there. So I was pretty happy with that. All right, day four butterfly. The market went down and just laughed and laughed and laughed. And all we could do is ride it down. Negative 600 normal, negative 600 expired. Again, the market just shot against me and I wasn't able to stop it out. Um, I, I have a love-hate with butterflies because they can be amazing when they pin, but they can be horrifying when they go against you. Um, it's worth noting I'm working on new butterfly code, so you don't have this huge risk, but the new code has the same risk to reward profile. All right, Iron Condor. You can see the Iron Condor was starting to get to the point it was going to be challenged. I did take a profit for 25 bucks, so it was 50% profit, but it did expire at $48. Sonar was a win. Everybody was like, yay. So Sonar at 115 bucks and expired for 150. What that means is I took that profit because I saw that needle moving against me very rapidly and I wanted Sonar to be a win. Expired for 150, always a good thing. And our vertical, this was not a good day for the vertical. I put the trade in and immediately the market went against us. We took a stop of negative 160, meaning it was over here. Actually, it was like down in here somewhere. And then it just kept going against us for a negative $422. Now, when you see these numbers, bear in mind that if you're a normal trader, you're looking at this normal number, not this horrifying expired number down here. All right, day five butterfly. Again, not a good day for a butterfly. Uh, normal and expired, both negative 900. Um, this is just my inexperience with butterflies and trying to stop them out. And the market just said, goodbye, adios. So my 401k loved it because all the numbers in the stock market moved up, but this butterfly just got left behind. So it did stop out, did not expire. Iron Condor got challenged. This is one of the few Iron Condors that actually stopped out. So it has a negative 120. This is what I mean by stop loss for an Iron Condor is critical because one loss on an Iron Condor can wipe out two or three days of profit. You gotta be very careful with these and never, never, never take an iron condor to max loss. Um, and it expired at $42, meaning you see how this magenta line is here curved. It means the price was down in the negative even though we were in the trade and then I stopped it out. But during the course of the day, it stayed within our profit 10 here. Not super happy with it, but that's the nature of trading. Sonar, however, was dead center. This is where I start really getting a feel for the sonar trades. Uh, I did take my profit collection at 75 bucks and it expired at 100 bucks. I mean, look at that, just dead center. Absolutely love it when it does that. Vertical, another textbook vertical day. Um, I did collect the profits at 40 because the needle moved so fast um, and it expired at 80. Again, this verticals kind of follow Axe options and how they do things. And I don't want to give away their secret sauce. I'd highly encourage you to join their group. I've learned a lot from them and they're a great group of people. And no, I'm not being paid to say that. Um, but their methodology is they typically take profit at about 50%. And it's actually a pretty solid methodology, as you can see. Day six butterfly, uh, not a good day for the butterfly. You can see it's right here. So our normal was negative 700. Again, I do get better with the butterflies as we go on. And I actually stop these out much sooner as this whole experiment moves on. But it did expire for 214. Um, butterflies have a huge, huge drop off here. I hate that. Uh, Iron Condor, not challenged. I mean, normal and expired 43 bucks. Did not stop out. I mean, not a whole lot to say there. 
Uh, Sonar was getting challenged towards the end, but I wrote it right into profitability for a positive 140 on normal and expired. You can see how it's right, right, right at that edge where it's going to be challenged. Again, sonar trades are end of day, so you got to be kind of careful. And vertical, you know, another good day for verticals. Uh, I took profit at 90 when the market started getting weird at the end of the day, but it did expire for $103. Looking at day seven, butterflies off to a strong start here. You can see it was slightly off, not a pin, but probably about 50% of the way to a pin. Uh, normal was uh, for $543 with the expired of $895. You know the drill. I saw profit, took profit, and then if I just let it ride, it would have been $895. Did not stop, did expire. Iron Condor really didn't even get challenged, but it did get off center here for normal profit of $48. Yeah, I actually took it when it started going off center, uh, just in case, and it expired at $50. I mean, that $2 profit's negligible. And Sonar, almost dead center. I love it when it does that. I mean, look at that thing. Right dead center there. 100% profit. Now, you may be asking yourself, days like today with that pink line, what does that mean? So look at this where it says 1602. What happens is at 1600 or 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that blue line is what matters the most. And then overnight, SPX will quote unquote settle, meaning if it's within our profit tent, you get the full profit. So normal was 60, expired with 95, did not stop, did expire out. And vertical, um, I hate to be repetitive, but another textbook vertical where we took 50% profit and we let it expire out at $90. Uh, did not stop and did expire. Um, honestly, a really textbook vertical day. It was actually a pretty boring trade. Day eight butterfly, um, kind of the same story. It was headed towards the middle and then it kind of shot off to the side. So. I took profit when I could, and I'm glad I did because it made more money than when it expired. So the real question becomes, how do you know when to take profit and how do you know when to just let it run? Um, I have my own personal philosophies on that. For a butterfly, I would not let it expire, even though you're gonna see the numbers just be you know, amazing for butterflies in this system when it comes to just firing and forgetting it. But that's because you're risking so much money. Me personally, I don't like to risk money, so I take profit when I see it. Iron Condor. Again, the profit on these is so minimal. I've actually thought about retooling these so the profit margin is bigger. Um, but it expired. I'm sorry, the normal is $22. It expired with $32. Did not stop. Did expire. Almost dead center in that condor. Sonar, uh, slightly off center, but still a great trade. Uh, normal of $82 and expired of $85. So you may be going, well, why do you take this at $82 if it expired at $85? You got to remember... This is going down like minutes before the market closes and you don't know what that green line is going to do. I mean, it's starting to go that way. So I want to capture that profit before it really starts going into this magenta curve here, because that's when you start losing money very rapidly. And if you go to get out of the trade, even if it's like right here, you're still going to take a loss. Um, you want to be very careful about that because this little red line right here, that's your break even. So if it's moving towards that red line, you want to be very cautious. And let's see, the day eight vertical um, started to really get right at that point where it was going to start challenging it and that was making me a little nervous. However, normal 100, you can tell that it started sliding back and I took the profit and it expired at 110. Did not stop, did expire. Butterfly, again, kind of off center here, about the 50% mark. Normal profit 500, expired 591. Saw profit, took profit. Um, Iron Condor, normal 30, expired 42, dead center in the Condor. I love those dead center days where you're just zero risk. Um, a lot of people look at that number and think, man, that is so low. Why even bother with it? But remember, if you take multiple contracts, that can go up exponentially based off your buying power. And of course, Sonar, um, slightly off center, uh, normal $80, expired 105. Um, you can see I'm getting better and better at sonars as this goes on. We're at day nine. We're already seeing win after win after win. So that's actually very encouraging to me at that point. And then vertical again. I mean, just sounding like a broken record, not even at that pink line yet. So wasn't really challenged. I had already cashed out long before then, but it expired at $100. Um, the goal of the software is to make trading boring, to be honest with you. I think it's actually starting to get to that point. Day 10, similar story, butterfly. Took profit at 6.30, expired at 6.88. You can tell it was kind of sliding against me 
Um, you'll also notice with the butterfly, you see this pink profit line is not within the blue profit 10. I've often wondered that. So I did some research and I don't know how accurate this is, but that actually exists based off of the metrics inside of the options chain. So for example, if the price the screen line suddenly dropped right here, there would be a few moments or a few minutes where that pink line would hold right there, but then you'd see it shift very rapidly. And I've actually watched it on the screen do that. So if there's some way to capture that, I would actually start coding towards it. I just haven't wrapped my head around it yet. Um, iron condors, um, similar story, and they're very boring. $40 versus $53. Um, it was not even really starting to get challenged, but it was a little off center. And sonar, uh, this one got a little scary right towards the end, not going to lie. Uh, normal 95, expired 95, meaning I rode it all the way to expiration that day. Um, you can see this pink line, how it's really skewed that way, uh, meaning that that's the way the price was going. It was really ripping up fast, and it was going to be very hard to stop that out if it went beyond my bounds. And if I zoom in, I mean, you can see just how close it is right at that magenta line where it's just starting to threaten this thing. Um, Personally, uh, that close to the edge, that's threatening to me because I have a small account. And vertical, uh, vertical absolutely got threatened this time around. Look, it's like right there, the pink's over here, and it's just like, hello. Um, that's super scary because when you got these verticals, you get too far beyond this and you're literally just falling off a cliff into the negative. So we had cashed that out early at $42 and it expired at $68. Um, uh, the goal of this, like I said, is to make trading boring, and that was not a boring day at all. Okay, butterfly day 11, um, negative 125 normal, negative 125 expired. Um, I really struggled with this day, I'll admit it. It just it started slamming against me, and I just said, you know what? I didn't think it was going to recoup, so I just cut my losses, and I'm kind of glad I did. Um, I just said, I'm done. See you, butterfly. Uh, admittedly, it's not really a great test to what the butterfly can do, but it is is what it is for that day. Uh, Condor, uh, $37 and $37, so it was perfectly fine. And Sonar, big, big miss on Sonar. Um, this is why stop losses are key. Normal took a negative 138, expired took a full loss of negative 420. This is what I mean by a full loss on a Sonar trade is not great, but of course, losing money sucks in any language. So we would have to make, you know, three to four trades successfully to recoup that loss. That's why stop loss, especially condors and butterflies, is critical. Vertical, um, of course, I mean, just look at that. I mean, right there, right there, right there, right at the break even. That is so frustrating. Um, but uh, normal, we actually collected 75 bucks. It was over here, and then the price slammed against me very rapidly. Um, so we're glad we collected when we did because the market expired at a negative 62. This I think is really a testament to uh, how professional traders like in Axe Options and uh, Vance Lauren with Buy the Numbers, how they actually do things. Because when they see their profit limit, they just take it. They don't wait for something like this to happen. All right, day 12, a new day. Uh, butterfly, $635, where the expiration was $1,035. I mean, look at that beautiful right there. Almost, I want to say about 80% way to pinning it. Um, I would love to be able to figure out how to pin a butterfly every single time. I just don't think it'll happen in my lifetime. Uh, Iron Condor, uh, 40 and 45. I did cut my loss a little bit early because the market was getting a little bit weird. Sonar, you can see where the, the weirdness started. Whenever I do these sonars, I call, kind of, I call it drift, where it was about right here is where I thought the market was going to close. And you can see, I mean, as, as amazing as it is that it's that close, it's still a bit further off than I felt comfortable. It was starting to really hit that magenta line where things would have gotten bad very rapidly. Uh, but in either case, it was 85 and 85, so profit day all around. Uh, vertical. Again, we took our profit at 50%, so $32, and expired at 65 so another textbook vertical day. All right, day 13 butterfly. Um, we were 527 profit. We cashed out. Glad we did because it expired at negative 820. This is a perfect example of why I personally would not run a butterfly to expiration because this kind of crap happens all the time where a butterfly will be in the positive and usually in this system it's about 300 400 in the positive and then suddenly it becomes negative so you try to collect those profits when you can 
Iron Condor, um, it did normal and expired at 50, but you can see this got very scary for Condors. I mean, just a, a fraction of a move more and we would have been looking at some loss. Um, not a fun day for a Condor. Sonar, um, yeah, did not have fun with Sonar. Luckily, I did cash this out when I started seeing the market move. Remember, Sonars are manual trades, so I construct them and I sit there and watch them. Uh, got 50 bucks out of it but then the market ripped up and i lost 391 just the nature of condors and vertical yeah uh, magic eight ball is not perfect it guessed the direction of the market wrong and in that case it stopped out at negative 175 very early on and i think it expired at 435 but i think when it stopped out it was actually still in the profit 10 it was like right in here somewhere and it just went goodbye it is what it is i'm trying to improve the software and nothing's perfect but you know, again, compared to where this was a year ago, it is vastly, vastly improved. All right, day 14 butterfly. Um, it did move against us very rapidly first thing in the morning, stopped it out at negative 420. You can see I'm starting to get better at stopping this out at a lower number. Um, but it, then it shot back up and expired out at 237. Super frustrating when that happens, I agree, but it's just part of trading. Uh, Condor, same thing. Condor actually got stopped out. You can see it was a negative 40. Uh, expired at 40. So it was just one of those days where I was like, I'm not taking a condor to full loss. I'm stopping this out. And then the market turned around and, well, went the way we wanted it to. Um, let's see here. Sonar, uh, 80 profit, 80 expired. And it just worked. I mean, Sonar just kind of became one of my favorite trades around this time of the experiment because I was getting very comfortable with them. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I've also started making these a little bit wider for slightly less premium. So for these condors, I've been shooting for about 80 to 90 premium instead of uh, 120 or 110. And vertical actually did stop out. You can see how it took a negative 150, but it expired for 90. Super frustrating. It went out here and then right back. Again, it's just part of trading. All right, day 15 butterfly. Um, we're talking a normal profit of 300 and expired at 399. We got kind of lucky that day. You can see how it's kind of teetering towards the edge. Normal 40, expired 40 for the iron condor. You can see it was kind of starting to threaten it a little bit, but not enough that I really felt the need to jump out of there. Sonar started to get a little scary, but of course, normal 85, expired 85. Love those days where it's in that, I call it the 75% range, where it's in there, where I'm not feeling too scared to the point I stop it out. And vertical, absolutely zero risk of this thing stopping, but I did collect profit at 50% just because I was feeling a little uneasy with the market based off the butterfly. However, it expired at full profit with $88. Um, I, personally, I'm really torn between verticals or sonar trades, even though sonars are just iron condors. And I'm thinking about retooling the giant iron condors to be a bit smaller to collect more premium, but they will, of course, impact the accuracy. It's kind of a trade-off. I haven't decided yet. Butterfly, day 16, a normal profit of 330 and expired of 522. You can see this is where, even though it's taken me half a month, I started finding my groove with butterflies and I was starting to collect profit around the 300 range. And if it started to dip down into the negative, I tried to cut it at negative 300, but uh, expired at 522. Uh, pretty, I want to say pretty common for butterflies where it'll start going up and then start going back. It's just the ebb and flow of the market. Condor, 50-50, a uh, good day for the Condor. I mean, really not a lot else to say there. Uh, sonar, dead center, absolutely loved it. I mean, look at that. I mean, you couldn't make that more center. I was super proud of myself. Um, however, whenever you can get cocky, the market will humble you very quickly, so you gotta be careful. Uh, I did take profit at 75, it expired at 115. Vertical, uh, normal, 45 profit, so we collected at 50%, expired at 78. You know, you can see the market did exactly what we thought it was gonna do, and life was good. Day 17, this was a scary day for the butterfly. Uh, took the profit at 330, you can notice how I'm starting to target about a 300 profit on the butterflies. And it expired at 52 bucks. So we had profit and then the market said, see ya. And we're kind of glad we collected. Still was a positive, but I mean, you can see just how stinking close that was to go into the negative. Um, yeah, you got to be super careful with that because the market can just make you cry very quickly. Uh, iron Condor, 50-50, uh, not a lot to say. Just another successful Iron Condor day. Sonar, another dead center sonar. I, you notice this one is a little smaller. Um, the market, for whatever reason, when I took this trade, was not really 
given me good option fills. Is it, am I saying that right? Option fills premium. Uh, and you'll also notice that I took a higher premium. I'm down here at 110. Um, this could have gone against me very rapidly. So this honestly was probably luck, uh, which is why I took profit at 75. It expired at 115. Vertical, again, took a 50% profit. It expired full profit at 78. I mean, just rinse and repeat with the verticals. Just make money and print it, print it, print it. Day 18. Yeah, I think I said earlier, once you get cocky, the market will humble you. This was that day. Uh, it stopped out at negative 400, so it stopped out around here, and the market just said adios, and whoop, off it went for a full, full loss on that expired butterfly. That is a painful loss. Um, fortunately, by then the system had made enough profitable butterflies, it wasn't super painful. Iron Condor did start to get challenged, but normal and expired full profit. Sonar, that one got scary. Uh, Sonar actually stopped out at negative 100, but expired back in profit 80. I think if I remember right, this actually like shot way up and then at the last minute dropped back down, but it already stopped me out. And vertical, I mean, this was just an amazing vertical. I put it on, collected it at 50%, expired 72. I could have just let my runner run and just watched it into the bank. Okay, butterfly day 19, uh, normal 300, expired 431. You notice how I'm really starting to just collect profit around 300. Um, Learn my lessons with butterflies by this point, and I don't like them making me cry. Iron condors, absolutely not threatened at all. Um, just a normal condor day. That is a weird, weird way of looking at it. It's a normal condor day to win. I mean, these have such an amazing accuracy because they're so big that I'm very confident that most of these condors win. Uh, sonar, dead center. Um, another great sonar day, 50% uh, profit, actually more than 50% profit, and it expired out of 80. Um, I'm actually at this point in the experiment getting very comfortable constructing these sonar trades. Vertical, uh, was not comfortable with that vertical, so I took profit and ran it expired at 85 but you can see that very very easily could have gone against me I mean, we're right at that threshold i call that the fun zone you don't want to be in the fun zone butterflies for day 20 uh 527 profit so it was actually over in here and then the market said goodbye and went down to negative 800 uh by expiration so again see profit take profit i know you hear a lot of the professionals say that and that is exactly why right there if you're greedy and you hold this thing, you could very easily lose all that profit you would have made. Iron condors, um, not really challenged, but moving into the direction of being cautious. Normal 40, expired 40. Sonar, this one made me mad, not gonna lie. I thought I made the perfect sonar and the market said, today's the day, little buddy, and it decided to humble me. Stopped out at negative 100 and it expired at $7. Not even joking, $7. I mean, come on. Ah. <sighs> Anyways, vertical, uh, another great vertical day. I just rode this one all the way to the bank, um, 53, 53, and you can see it was not even remotely challenged. Um, I'm trying to get a real good feel for when to run these to full profit. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm just starting to get a gut feel and watching the market. Day 21, butterfly. Again, we took profit around 350, so it was over in this range. And it dropped down and expired at 125. Um, butterflies have a habit of betraying me, so I'm getting better at collecting the profit. Iron condor, I mean, dead center. I mean, that is like a beautiful condor. I mean, you could just go watch a movie and come back. There's zero threat to this thing. I wouldn't do that, but you know what I mean? You could do that. Uh, sonar was starting to get threatened. Um, you can definitely tell by the profit curve here uh, that the market was going down. But regardless, full profit of 90, expired of 90. And vertical, again, you can just sit back and relax and watch the money print into your bank account. However, I did take a 50% profit and watch it expire at 65. Day 22, butterfly. I, I mean, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. It, in this case, it was worth about $1,500. Uh, I collected profit at 300 and then just sat here and watched it pin and was like, man, I wish I knew it was going to do that. But uh, I mean, what can you say? Butterflies are like that. Iron Condor, uh, another full profit day for the Iron Condor, 40 and 40. Uh, what more can you say? It's just making money. Sonar, um, Sonar's again, $50 profit, took profit just over 50% and expired at 75. Um, getting very comfortable with Sonar's at this point. I'm not like, going to say I've mastered them, but you notice 
the $80 premiums rather than the one or the 110 are actually making way more money because they're getting stopped out less. Verticals, uh, right at the edge of concern, but I did write it to the end of day. Um, why did I write it to the end of the day? I don't know. To be honest with you, I should have cashed it out at 50%, but it made full profit, so I'm not going to complain. Day 23, butterfly. Uh, normal and expired, 559. Uh, this was a very calm day, so I just rode that butterfly to expiration. Admittedly, a poor choice. I should have just cashed it out at 300, but that extra 200 does help. Um, again, I, I, you got to watch your risk management. This is not financial advice, but in the real world, you should take profit and you stop loss. Iron Condor, 40 and 40. Um, another boring Iron Condor day. Uh, sonar, this got exciting towards the end of the day. You see, I did cut it at 90. I mean, it was right here and that market started moving. And I said, nope, cut it and took the $90 profit. However, it did expire for 100, got lucky. And vertical, um, took the 65 profit, watched the price go here and then slam back and it expired at 100. But I thought for sure that was going to slam back further. So that was an interesting day for the vertical. All right, day 24 butterfly. Again, I did something very foolish. I ran that butterfly to expiration, but it was a profitable day. Again, risk management's key. Don't do that, even though I got lucky. Iron condor, uh, normal and expired, 78.78. A very boring iron condor day. Uh, sonar, 105 and 105. Uh, you know, sonars are just iron condors, so it was pretty boring. One thing to note on this one is the uh, premium was 110, and you see how big this Condor is compared to the other sonars. If I remember right, volatility was up a little higher, and I took this trade a little bit earlier. Uh, vertical, just, you know, fire and forget. Um, put the vertical out there and just ran it to full expiration. Worked pretty good. You'll notice the premium I'm collecting is about 1 to 110, and usually, not today, but usually I take about 50% profit. Very in line with what Axe Options does. Um, I don't want to steal their magic or their thunder. They are way better than I am, admittedly. I just wrote this software and I let the software do the thinking for me. Um, that being said, I'm interested to see the long-term results of verticals versus uh, the sonar trades because I think the sonar trades are winning slightly more and collecting a little bit more profit. Day 25. Yeah, you ever have one of those days where everything just works? Yeah, that was not day 25. You can see we took our profit at 380, and boy, am I glad we did because it expired at the full loss of negative 2,000. That is a super painful loss for a butterfly. Watching your bank account divvy down to by 2,000 is not fun. So very glad we took profit on that. Uh, Iron Condor, this, this would have made people cry if they were in a real trade. So it stopped out at negative 90. This is why you use your stops. It would have been a 10 times loss if you ran that to expiration. Running an iron condor to full expiration on a loss, or I should say running it to a full loss, that's a death sentence for your bank account, to be honest with you. Um, and there wasn't much you could do. I'm really glad that stopped out the way it's supposed to. Sonar also stopped out and expired at the full loss of 410. I think if I remember correctly, what happened here is the market was very... Um, fluctuating back and forth, and then towards the end of the day, it just dropped hard and fast, and no one could do anything about it. Verticals, however, just did not care. <laughs> vertical, vertical peeps, you out there were just sitting back with a coffee or a whiskey, whatever you're drinking, and just watching your money print. Um, not even remotely close to being challenged. The actual edge of the vertical dropped off this little radar here, just whoop, right off to the side, no worries whatsoever. But, of course, we followed our rules. 35 profit, expired for 50. Day 26 could not be the polar opposite of the day before. We took profit at 261 because I was a little shell-shocked from the day before. And of course, the butterfly almost pins at $1,200. Uh, Iron Condor, nothing to worry about there. 42, 42. Um, slightly off-center, not a big deal. Uh, sonar, same thing. 90, 90 for the profit. Slightly off-center. Really not even worried about it. Vertical, again, 92, 92. Uh, kind of at that point where I was getting a little concerned, but it just kept kind of bouncing right in this range and didn't go much further back. Day 27, butterflies. Um, normal profit of 340. Again, I'm shooting for about 300 profit per trade and expired pretty much at pin at 1289. I mean, you couldn't really get too much closer to pin on that one. It was right there. Um, really got to figure out how to pin those consistently. 
Iron Condors, no worries. 43 and 43. It just, it was an easy day. Sonar, uh, started to worry a little bit. You can see how the price was starting to move against me. But regardless, ran it to full expiration for 100 and it expired at 100. And Vertical, um, really didn't care. I took the 50 profit, which is way over 50%, because the market was doing this all day. But then when it started moving back against me, I said, nope, took the money and ran. It still expired full profit at 60. Day 28, um, Butterfly, normal, 320 profit. Again, almost pinned at 1,230. I mean, man, that's the stuff that dreams are made out of right there. Um, I would love to say the software got vastly more intelligence toward the end of this, but honestly, it was just the market was much calmer and it was blind luck. Iron Condors, you can see dead center, well, close to dead center, 43, 43 for profits. Um, no worries there in Condor land. Sonar, also almost dead center. If you look at the profit curve, the time and profit, it is, I mean, just slightly off dead center. Uh, for normal of 110 and expired of 110, uh, just a great money-making day. And vertical, you know, no worries there. Took the profit at 50, expired at 68. Day 29, day before the end of the experiment. And, ooh, that was a rough start to the day. That butterfly took a stop of negative 300 and expired at negative 543. So this is what I mean by the software did not magically become better. The market was just calmer. Uh, Iron Condor was right at that point where I think it was going to start to become challenged and too much further. And I would have considered just collecting profit. But we took the full $52 profit and it expired at 52. Sonar, I did collect profit at 90 because like I said, the market was acting a little weird and it expired at 115. Vertical, I love verticals. It just... Did not care what the market did. However, I collected my profit at 50 and expired for the full 70. Day 30, uh, our last day, frustrating day for butterflies. It stopped out at negative 300, so it was actually over here somewhere, and then snapped back down for a 402 profit. Uh, that is frustrating, but what can you do? Condors, not really threatened at all. 48 profit for both normal and expired. And Sonar, this one was nervous. I wanted a good ending, so admittedly I gambled. I mean, really, really gambled. Look at how close we are to falling off that cliff. Should not have done that, but I wanted a good ending to the story for Sonars, and we had a happy ending of $80 for normal and expired. Articles again. Ah, oh, this was frustrating for me. So it did stop out at negative 117, but then expired in profit for 57. So this line went... Whoopsie daisy, stopped out and then slammed back. Ugh. Anyways, that's the end of our journey. Um, these trades have been fairly educational for me, and I hope they've been educational for you as well.